Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and this is our monthly-ish cool tools video. I'm going to show you several tools we use here in both of our workshops, including my go-to bandsaw blades, my favorite American-made screwdrivers, a new version of my favorite workshop headphones, and we'll compare Stanley's Sweetheart and Bailey lines of chisels. Finally, for our cheap tool of the month, we'll look at some gauges that every shop should have. As always, if a tool is from a sponsor, we'll say so here in the video, otherwise we bought them ourselves. There are affiliate links to all the tools in the notes below this video. Just click on show more down there if you're watching on YouTube. Then you can find out what other people are saying in their reviews and decide if a tool that I think is cool is right for your shop. If you want to skip ahead to a particular tool, those links are below as well. So let's get started. It's been seven years since Stanley reintroduced their 750 Sweetheart chisels. I remember Chris Schwartz, who was still with Popular Woodworking back then, speculating at the time about whether they were the best chisels on the market and comparing them to his favorites, which were the Lee Nielsen's. A lot of people held back on these because when they came out, they were pretty expensive. But now, seven years later, the price for a set has come down significantly if you know where to look. So, is it time to give them a serious look? And what about the other set that Stanley makes under their Bailey name? Both are made from Sheffield steel, both come with nice leather tool rolls, and both sets are now under a hundred bucks. Are either of them good enough to grace your workbench? Let's have a look at them one at a time. The Sweetheart chisels are sold in sets of four or eight. I own the four piece set, which was about $73 and it includes quarter inch, half inch, three quarter, and one inch, the most common sizes for most shops. I also added a fifth chisel, an eighth inch, which I like to use, so it made mine a five piece set for around $100 total. I've heard people say that these new Stanleys look a lot like Lee Nielsen's chisels. They assume that Stanley is copying Lee Nielsen, but it's actually the other way around. Both brands are patterned after the pre-World War II Stanley 750s, which were perhaps the best Western style chisels ever made. With these new 750 Sweethearts, Stanley hoped to reclaim its design, which Lee Nielsen has been using for a few years now. And they did a decent job of it. The new Sweethearts are very comfortable to hold and very well balanced. The rounded ends fit nicely in the palm, making them comfortable for pairing. The socket design means the handle will only get tighter if you use a mallet on it. It's unlikely to split like some tang chisels might, but there's no metal ring on the end to keep the head from mushrooming like some vintage 750s had, so I wouldn't beat on them with anything more than a wooden mallet unless you want to ruin those nice comfortable handles. Stanley makes the steel in Sheffield, England, which has long been a place for high quality tool steels. They say it's a high carbon steel with some chromium mixed in, which makes it a bit harder and helps keep it looking nicer than the old school high carbon steels of the vintage 750s. They sharpen up quickly, they hold their edge very well. I was not disappointed in the quality of the steel at all. I would classify these new sweethearts as semi-premium chisels. Not as good as Lee Nielsen's, for reasons we'll get to shortly, but vastly better than the chisels in most tool cabinets out there. The new Stanley Bailey chisels come in a set of five, from one quarter inch up to inch and a quarter. They're about 64 bucks on Amazon, making them significantly less expensive than the four-piece Sweetheart, which was 73 and didn't include the largest inch and a quarter chisel. While the Sweethearts are socket chisels, the Baileys feature a metal tang that extends into the hardwood handle. Technically, that tang can work as a wedge to split the handle if you beat on it too much. But I've done a fair amount of pounding on these with a wooden mallet, and the brass ring at the base of the handle seems strong enough to, to prevent splitting. They also have another ring on the end of the handle to prevent mushrooming there as well. And these handles are permanently attached, while the Sweetheart handles can fall off on you sometimes. The Bailey steel is advertised as carbon chrome, which sounds pretty similar to what they said was the Sweetheart steel. Maybe there's a bit more chromium in it, I'm not sure. Overall, I'd classify the Baileys as a great set for the weekend woodworker. If I had to choose between the two, I'd choose the Sweethearts, but they're not as far apart as the price would suggest. They're both good sets of chisels. The differences are in the design. Stanley makes the Sweetheart chisels for fine woodworking. The high carbon steel is soft enough for easy sharpening, but hard enough to hold an edge in most woodworking tasks. 
The handles are smaller and more comfortable for pairing. The weight is in the steel end rather than in the handle itself, which makes them better suited for balancing on end, such as when dovetailing. However, the handle design isn't really suited for heavy mortising and chopping. On the other hand, the Bailey chisels are designed and marketed to contractors. I bought my set at a home center, in fact. The larger handles with the ringed ends are easier to hold for mortising and chopping, but less comfortable for pairing and dovetailing. The steel itself seems to be pretty much the same between the two. The Sweethearts are high carbon steel, like I said, with some chromium, and the Baileys are marketed as carbon chrome steel. I'm not a steel expert, but that sounds like the same thing to me. Perhaps Bailey has a bit more chromium, maybe to stand up to the demands of a contractor a bit better. I really didn't see much difference in my workshop between the steels. Both tools suffer from the same deficiencies in fit and finish. Unlike Lee Nielsen, which come flat and polished right out of the box, both the Sweethearts and the Baileys had some significant marks left behind by the grinding process. Expect to spend some time flattening the backs, especially with the Baileys, which I found it needed a bit more work to set up than the Sweethearts. Besides fit and finish, another area where both of these sets fall short as compared to high-end tools like the Lee Nielsen is the side bevels. For dovetailing, you want as fine a side bevel as possible so you can get into the corners between your tails. Both the Baileys and the Sweethearts were inconsistent when it came to that. Some have flats as narrow as a sixteenth of an inch, others wider than an eighth. It was a little disappointing, but not unexpected in this price range. So which one should you buy? I'd buy the Sweethearts because they're more comfortable and better balanced. But if your budget's a little tight, the Baileys are also an excellent set for less money, plus you get the large inch and a quarter chisel with the set, making it an even better deal. I'll put a link to both in the notes below the video so you can check them out for yourself and read what other people are saying. If you think all screwdrivers are created equal, you haven't used a good screwdriver. The problem with most screwdrivers is they have wedged shaped ends. That doesn't give you a lot of surface to surface contact within a screw slot, which can cause the tip to slip out and damage your screw or worse yet your project. If you want a properly designed screwdriver, you have to avoid the dollar store bins and get one like this. These Grace USA screwdrivers have been a favorite of gunsmiths since the 40s and woodworkers have been using them for decades as well. Rather than a wedge shaped tip, these tips end in two parallel faces for a better fit and they're well hardened for a long life. I love the wood handles too. They're comfortable and they just look great in a woodworking shop. And they don't put a slick finish on them either, so they're easy to grip. They're just good, well-made screwdrivers made here in America. I own the seven-piece original Gun Care set, which works perfectly well for woodworking. However, a few years ago, they came out with a specialty set specifically designed for the slots in wood screws. The reason I don't have that set is because the ones I have work perfectly fine and they're about half the price as that specialty set. I'll link to them in the notes below this video so you can check them out yourself. I used to go to my local woodworking supplier to buy bandsaw blades. If I wanted a quarter inch blade, for example, I had two choices. The $20 Starrett, which never lasted very long, and the $36 Timberwolf, which was better, but nearly twice the price. Then a friend and fellow woodworker named Izzy Swan told me I should check out sawblade.com that makes custom cut blades. Around that same time, Andy Klein did his bandsaw blade torture test video where he cut cement board with these blades to show how long they would stay sharp. That convinced me to give him a closer look. So I went to meet the owner of sawblade.com, Chris Luke in Atlanta. Turned out he's a great guy. When I got back, I ordered some bandsaw blades and I was so impressed they became a sponsor. Now, some people might assume that we just take on any sponsor that'll write a check. That is so not true. We choose our sponsors very carefully. I turn down tools all the time. I'm not gonna tell you a tool is a good thing if it's a piece of junk because I'm not a liar and you guys aren't idiots. I have to believe a product will truly benefit our audience before I make any deal like that. That's the case with the sawblade.com bandsaw blades. After using them for the better part of a year, I'm convinced that they are the best for the money. I did not say they are the best bandsaw blades in the world. I don't know that. There's lots of blades I haven't tried. 
but they seem every bit as good as the Timberwolf blades I was using for about half the price. I do not resaw with these blades because I use a carbide blade for that. So I'm not able to compare them to like the wood slicer. I know some of you are going to say, how do they compare to the wood slicer? I don't know. I don't resaw with these blades. I use them for general purpose curves. And I'm telling you, you cannot beat a clean cutting, long lasting blade for like 15 bucks. So check them out in the notes below. I've been using Isotunes earbuds in the shop for about a year now. We did a segment on them in a previous Cool Tools video, and my only complaint has been battery life. Not the life of the battery in the headphones, the life of the battery in my smartphone. My phone's a couple years old, so the battery's not as great as it used to be, and so the Bluetooth feature on the phone tends to eat up the phone's battery when I'm listening to music or something like that. That's fine most of the time, because I can just throw it on the charger at lunch, but if I'm in the shop all day and I want to listen to a podcast or music while also protecting my ears from machine noises, I've switched to using the wired versions instead. They still provide the OSHA compliant hearing protection. They still have the uh, sweat and splash proof features. They still provide great crisp sound and the microphone's still great too. It's actually kind of amazing. I can run the snowblower outside the shop while talking on the phone and neither of us will have any problem hearing. They're made of high quality materials too. The buds and the controls are metal and wood and the wire is double braided. I still like the convenience of the wireless Bluetooth ones, but the wired versions are a great way to get the same sound and hearing protection without having to worry about batteries and they're less expensive. I'll put a link to them in the notes below this video so you can find more information. That brings us to our cheap tool of the month. This is something every woodworker should own, a drill bit gauge. Let's face it, you don't always put your drill bits away when you're done with them. This little guy will help you figure out what the sizes are when you eventually get around to slipping them back in their places. It's heavy steel, so it's gonna last forever, and it cost me about five bucks. Here's another way to use it. You know how store-bought dowels are never a consistent size? They're usually actually a little smaller. You can use this to measure your dowel and then match it to the proper drill bit. No more putting an undersized dowel in a 5 16th hole. If you check out the links below, you're also gonna find another gauge. This one is made of plastic, but it's for nuts, bolts, and screws. I don't have to tell you how handy this little guy is when it comes time to put away that sort of junk. Well, that wraps it up for this edition of Cool Tools. Please use the links in the notes below because that helps us out. And head over to stumpynubs.com for the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always filled with great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at stumpynubs.com. Then you can sit back and have yourself a cold one because you've earned it, my friend.